All right, this shows the contraption as it stands at the moment. Uh, both rollers mounted, plenty of black paint everywhere. And I'm just going to turn it up now and show you. Stand by. This just shows you the chain run. This is all going to run nicely here and I'll put this little idler, idler sprocket in here. So all of this is going to work out nicely. I put in some bars here to keep the frames apart. In actual fact the shafts and the bearings, uh, they're also positively located by little uh, little socket head caps or little so so socket head grub screws in the bearings. Uh, if I just go down here, you can see there's one there. In other words, that helps put the shaft in and nip that up and then that will stop the shaft moving or indeed stop the plates moving apart. So this is all going to be fairly stiff at the end of it all. This is just the finished machined plate here. Uh, it's got a recess machined in it now, which picks up on that spigot there. So I'll go along there. I'll drill some holes there and mount the motor to this. And the plate in, a, in turn will be mounted via these one inch bars out to one plate and from underneath here down to another plate. That'll all work nicely. This shows a slight modification to the plan. To avoid this running on the chain, I've had to just put a little gag piece in there, cut out from a piece of uh, channel. That'll work nicely, it's fairly robust, and there isn't an awful lot of leverage then from the center line here to where this is. This'll be okay. Right, this shows you the little idler pulley, and uh, the way the chain is gonna go over it. So, uh, Right, this is a little shaft which I bored out previously as plan B to go down and engage on that. Well, I've decided that's the route I'm going to go. And in fact, I'm going to chop this part off. I might even keep those splines and fit them for something else. But uh, this is the shaft I'm going to use. You can see I've extended it here by machining it away and pressing it in there. That will give a little bit more bite into the... Uh, the support bearing at the end. The reason I had to do that is I had a small boring bar and there was a limit to how far in I could go with this. So anyway, look, I've turned up another little sleeve. That's going to be Loctited on. And that then will have a, a nut and bolt going through it and through the shaft. And uh, this extra dimension here will take the load for the bolt. And that's all there is to it. I'm using this uh, 6 8, what is it, 6 3 8. And it's kind of simple, really. It's kind of thick and gloopy. I've used this before on heavy applications. So I just put a thin veneer over everything. Needless to say, this has all been very comprehensively scrubbed and cleaned with brake cleaner. So there's no grease on this anywhere. So that'll do there. And then this end here. It's quite thick.
Right, that'll do. I'll let that, uh, I'll let that set. And well, it's decision time. I've decided to dispense with these blinds and chop this off here. So here we go. Well, this is quite a nice fit, even dry. It uh, compresses the gas. It doesn't leak out. I'm impressed with that. Anyway, if I can get the air out of it, which I'm sure I will eventually, that will go there and I can put a bolt through all of this uh, and that will secure that. I might even put some more Loctite on this because uh, this Loctite appears to be working nicely. Right, after being very, very careful, this is the geometry that I need to achieve. I've drilled a little hole through and I've also put a little dimple on this. Where's the camera? Right, a little dimple there and a little punch mark on the shaft so that this will go through together because lining this hole up, no matter how carefully you are, there's always a danger that the hole will not be fully on center. So that's going to work all right. So the next thing now is simply to put a load of this. Uh, hang on, let me just get that there. This stuff is still quite thick. So I'm planning to put on quite a lot and then the radius of the inner race will help help it all just sort of wedge up underneath and I should get fairly good penetration across the whole thing. Uh, there's no point in putting any inside the, the race because in effect... Right, here we go. Right, this is a drilling sequence now where I'm going to run a drill into this to start with and then I'll be able to use this carbide tip boring bar to open it out to the point where I can fit this bearing in and the sprag clutch. So I've just oiled up the lathe, a bit of tension there. Nothing to do without that gearbox running, that's better. Right. I think that's a little bit fast. That's better. It's quite a big drill. I'm getting very close to the finished uh, dimension here probably another 15 or 12 thou to go so this is going to be a spring cut to stabilize the, the dimension and then I'm going to use the little telescopic gauges again and get the micrometer guy so uh, almost there with this hole right I'm just going to set the spring out here That's it, get the old micrometer going. Use this initially. One eight twenty 
1.823 this is 1.823 1 1.850 1 1.850 on this in other words this is meant to be 47 millimeters in those outside diameter Right, as you can see, this has now got to the point where this bearing will just, just, just wiggle in. It's very tight, but it will go in. And, uh, oh. right, I can secure that nicely with Loctite. That'll do nicely. And that hole goes all the way through and it'll be the same fit for the sprag clutch on the other end of it. So all I need to do now is take this out of the chuck, clean up all this mess and then degrease all this in preparation for some Loctite. So getting there. Well, the strategy for this is simply to Loctite this bearing into this hole and I'm going to put it down like that and push it through so that it's flush. Uh, and this, then I'm going to put a little shim in on top of this, about 80 thou I've calculated. And then I'm going to use this as a centralizing element with uh, some Loctite on it so that ultimately the inner ring and this will be Loctite together. And then I'll have stuff around the outside here and uh, or rather the inside of the, ch the hole and also around this bear, this sprag clutch so that this will all go in. It will be centralized on the bearing. And as I've already mentioned in one of the other videos, wherever you have clearance, you have the ability of things to sort themselves out. I'm going to rely on the surface tension of the Loctite to centralize this and uh, make it as 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 clean an alignment as possible. Uh, so that's going to work. So all I need to do now is uh, try and get on with this without getting Loctite all over myself. I've already degreased all this stuff and uh, I'm just going to Right. I had to just lightly tap that so I'm confident that uh, I would have brinnled or damaged the race tracks or the ball race tracks. Uh, so I'm going to let that sit there for a little while. And uh, while that's going on, I'm going to make up a brass shim to sit in there. And then that will keep the outer race of this separate from that and make sure that uh, these things don't rub together the bearing and the sprag clutch when there's some sort of differential movement. This is a strange machining operation that I'm going to do. As you can see, I've ground up a hooky little tool like this. I used this a long time ago to cut a, a circlip groove. But what I'm going to do now, because I only need 80 thou of this and I don't really want to machine all this and turn it into swarf, I'm just going to dig a little trench in this and then come in with a parting tool and part myself off a little uh, a little shim. So that's why this is shaped like this. I'm just going to be, 
I seem to remember what the last time I used it, it worked all right, but this is brass, so it might just chatter a bit. Just another little bit of an adventure. Anyway, stand by for more swarf. Right. Got a parting off tool mounted in this now and uh, I'm going to set the thickness of this shim with the old vernier calipers that's accurate enough to measure out 80 thou so what I'm going to do basically is put the tip there and then just push this and measure that well that's actually 79 thou so I shall just put a little bit in on the hand wheel here and just try that again. And that's 84 thou. Let me just try that a final time. Got to get the geometry of this thing properly sorted out. Okay, I'm happy with that. It's just a little bit over 80. That'll do nicely. So, all I've got to do now is start up again. Switch out. And uh, just gently feed this in. parallel sided uh, surfaces that'll do nicely a little bit of work on the scraper there to take the end the edge off that and that'll work nicely so let's move on to the next stage right here we go again with uh, more loctiting operations just make sure those little grub screws are out yeah that'll do nicely so the plan now is to put plenty of loctite uh, first of all I need to put this little shim in that will go in there and I need to put plenty of Loctite on this surface for the Sprague clutch be better with the way the lighting is right just leave that like that for a minute Need to get some Loctite on this as well, on the inner bearing. And then this is next bit.
Now as the edge of the bearing approaches this fluid it will just push it ahead, it'll plough through it all and the slight radius on the inside of the bearing race should act like a wedge and help drive this material under the, the race and between the surfaces rather than just shovel it all apart. So that's the plan anyway. And it's easily found out because if I try to use this and it all slips, well then I'll know this thing has simply not worked. And if it does slip, well it'll probably be easy enough to take it apart. Uh, you, all you have to do is heat it up anyway. But I think that's done. All I've got to do now is simply push this in. I'm happy with that. That's home and level. And uh, all I've got to do now is just see if it rotates. That's good. That's good. That's going to work nicely. Okay, I'll simply let that sit there for a little while. And harden up and then it'll, the next thing now will be to turn up some of the uh, spacer tubes to hold the or to bridge the gap between the plate that this mounts to and the the motor plate uh, because the shaft will come in here it's all falling into place you know it's looking good well as you can see I've been busy I've got four of these legs, uh, they're all machined to the same length, uh, to within a thou. And they're going to bolt onto this, and then this shaft will be supported with this bearing. And then one side, this is just a dummy run now at this stage, but eventually what I'm going to do is continue these shafts from here across. And what I'll do is I'll just uh, use a piece of studding, which will I'll lock tight it into this tube, and then that will then screw into that and I'll drill a hole in the tube so I can put a Tommy bar through it and twist it. That means these will be clamped together and then the whole thing can be dropped in between the frames and then I can pick up on all of these. So it should be very rigid and resist the kick and the torque reaction of this motor. Well, as you can see, this bridge piece here, the chain isn't fully tensioned yet, but this bridge piece here was required to allow this chain run. And if I turn this around now, you can see everything has fallen into place, except that I'll have to uh, do a, make a duplicate here uh, and allow this uh, to, to, I'll need a sort of a bridge piece in here, which will allow, allow the chain to run across onto this. So the chain alignment is all pretty well uh, cut and dried really. So all I need to do now is uh, All I need to do now is just uh, Chop some of these up and bridge this whole thing across here This is a shot of a rather repetitive a uh, bit of machining. I had rather a lot of these to make as you'll see when uh, I show you the whole thing assembled. Certainly four of these at a very consistent length was a pro was required and uh, rather than video the whole thing I'm just going to show you how I end up making one. So I face this off, centre drill it, drill it to 6.75 or 6.25 no, no, 6.75, and then I run the 8mm by 1.25 tap into it, and then that end is done. Then I turn it over, I machine away the other end, and I take it out a couple of times to just make sure that the length of this is correct when compared to the other. A thou either way isn't going to hurt, and then uh, the same process is repeated.
Right, they're all now nicely sized to within a thou of one another and that will work nicely. Right, here we go, drilling for a Tommy bar hole. <laughs> This shows the assembled uh, contraption which is all ready to go installed and to, to be installed. Uh, oh, that looks, it's just a little spacer to complete with this. This bolt as it happens is currently captive but this will go through the plate here. This will go through the plate and uh, I'll put a nut on that uh, and although I might yeah I think a nut on that will do and then bolts in all this and then this one will go on here and uh, once I have it all tightened up I shall tighten these grub screws lace up the chain and uh, that'll be that so as you can see this is this is where these little holes have come in I was able to I was able to use a Tommy bar here, just a bar, to uh, tighten these up because this obviously I need to hold this and give this a tweak and it's actually got enough friction here to make that work. Well, one of the last jobs before I actually start this, uh, trialing this to see if it's going to work, is uh, putting the chain together and then putting a split link on it. Now this is going to be, let's see which way this works, it goes in this direction. So this is the way the closed end should be. And once I get this done, and the camera's in the way again. Yeah, that wasn't too difficult. Right, now I can set about tensioning this. I think a lot of this is going to work out nicely by just tensioning this part. Anyway, I'm going to shuffle things around again and lay this flat now. Stand by. Interesting little dilemma here. By simply tightening this or adjusting it down at this end, I've tensioned this chain and it's pulled it off here. So it looks like I need to put some slack in this and then raise this one so that this part of the chain tension is such that this then sits down nicely onto that sprocket then I can tension it. Uh, I hadn't really thought about that but it makes sense anyway. Well, I was going to go through the motions of soldering up everything and doing a proper job, but really I couldn't wait. So I've only soldered on one battery terminal over there on the battery. And uh, now I'm just going to connect it up and make some sparks and see what happens. Uh, there's a lot of noise outside. There's somebody chopping a tree down at the moment. So uh, anyway, let's see how this works. Everything is still cold. That's good. Well, the first thing I intend to do is simply motor this in neutral on the rollers to see what sort of uh, speed I can get to. Uh, 
it's got to be more than a fast push uh, to be effective so fortunately the speedo is driven off the back wheel so it will be interesting to see if the chronometric shows anything so this is the first first of the attempts at using this Well, the chronometric has gone up to 10 mile an hour, so that's good enough. Right, I'm just going to try and see about getting this into gear. Right, we'll call that a dismal failure. I'm going to end this video now. This has been an interesting experiment. This thing works, but the motor isn't powerful enough. I think given the... I even thought about altering the sprocket size, but I think the revs per minute on the wheel are just about a minimum. 10 miles per hour, that's about as much as I can hope for, or as, that's, that's as much as I need. And uh, all I need to do now is get some more power that will sustain that. So anyway, look, it's been an interesting experiment and uh, I shall play around with this a bit more. I'll have to rearrange these things a little bit here and get a more powerful motor. And uh, that'll be fun and games because I think I'll probably have to go to a pre-engaged motor uh, which has a solenoid mounted on the top of it. And that will also mean playing around with a sprocket. Anyway, more of that later.